So the Buddha actually encourages wealth. But the, the problem is, so he taught the middle way, not too extreme of something and not too lazy. So right. don't, don't be in the like, room all day sleeping. That's, that's like lazy, right? And then the extreme part is that don't want so much where it affects your homework school balance. That's how I teach it, which is, I mean, there's people that work so much because they want to be a millionaire where it is affecting their marriage. They're never home. They don't talk to their wife or husband. That was probably me before. And then I had an anxiety attack. Because I, well, I worked here, so it wasn't like I wasn't here, but I was kind of still, I was here, but not here, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm just focused on what I'm doing well. Right, right, right. But, but then, you know, all the pressures of business and all that eventually had an anxiety attack in me. And then it affected my health and all that, so. Yeah. But anyways, that's kind of, maybe I'm beyond that now, but I never want to be where, you know, that was to an extreme. Right, right. So, I, I, we all went there. I mean, I, I, went, I had three jobs in school. It was crazy. I, I don't even know why I look this young. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause that, but that's life in America. Or it's like, like it was a lot of Asian people have, you know, helicopter moms and you know, that just yeah. push them to, to just kill themselves in school and yeah. all that stuff lawyer doctor or you're a loser yeah yeah that type of you very toxic yeah. very tough but you know it's like it, it 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 permeates not just southeast asia but also in europe and here and there when we analyze the cultural aspect of the um the push it's i think it's a good push i mean it, it, without the push people just don't know how to adjust without the push we can't advance as human in society humanity the advancements, you know, we, that's why the advancements of medicine, technolo- you know, technology, but people don't know how to adjust that, you know, and, and boundaries and assertiveness, especially when companies push you around, you know, you have to like say, look, I can only do like five hours of this because eight hours I'm burnt out. And research shows that technically in one day, whatever you focus on, just four hours of it is going to be effectiveness and efficiency. You'll be burnt out after four hours. Of anything that you do, anything, you know, and that's why kids are like berserk and resorting it's to weed. Interesting because we, when we're doing software development, we deliberately take breaks in between. Like so, it's kind of like set a, a minute, a mini goal um, that you can achieve within an hour or two. Once you achieve that goal, take a break, then set a, you know, you just have a bunch of little tiny mini goals lined up and then right. at the end of the day you've accomplished quite a bit and without you know because you you you're not overwhelmed with everything you just focus on one little piece of the puzzle get that done and then move to the next piece right um but it, so would you consider your buddhism a more of a religion or more of a philosophy he asked me that today oh he's very really smart oh um so it needs to be a religion so that it's protected under law. Okay, uh, huh. oh, that's very important because uh, as well. A, then maybe rephrase it: Is it more spiritual, or is it more of the world? Like how do you is it more about this life and how you get through this life, or is it about the next life or the afterlife or whatever? So one, it needs to be protected by law. Number two, it is a way of life. It is a choice that you make. No one's going to force you. The Buddha even says, "Whatever I say, don't believe me. You're supposed to test this out for yourself." So it's, you know, it's a very chill philosophy. We accept everyone for who they are. And I don't, we shouldn't give too much emphasis on the next afterlife because we don't know. What is important is a good life equals a good death. And one needs to examine that right away. That's what's real. And also the subject of God. Does God exist? Huh? I don't know. I don't care. Does Buddha actually exist? I don't know. I don't care. Because it's beyond, it's beyond that. It's, it's just beyond. The, the most important thing and of clinical concern is, are we suffering right now? And if, you know, are you sleeping well? Just that clinical question alone. You can't sleep well if you're not at peace. Hmm. Nonetheless, want to worry about what, if God exists or not. You know what I mean? Hmm. So the Buddha was like, I only teach two things. Suffering and the end of suffering. That's it. So what if you want to practice a philosophy, but you don't want to shave the head and you don't want to wear a robe? <laughs> you still you still can you still can't you just take the precept just like they do just like we, we do but you know this just a, a, a more rigorous uh type of 
practicing, whereas the lay people can still enjoy what you do. This is just one step up. It's more um, intermediate and advanced. And but for lay people, they can still keep the precept, you know, and try to. And the precept helps you just readjust your life to that middle way. That's it. Like refrain from entertainment. Which is singing, dancing, TikTok, Facebook. Look at how people are addicted to that. Even my dad's doing it, and it's like, and then sometimes we have to snap out of it and be like, "All right, well, <laughs> maybe a little too much entertainment." Or, or, <laughs> or like, you know, is that entertainment playing with the boats? Like, we're. It can be two things. Are you using it to relax, and what is the intent? If you're gonna take that and and race and start making it gas fuel injected then it's like okay i mean is your homework done why are you out there with gas injected boats trying to like <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like taking something to an extreme and neglecting homework school balance right. in modern day apply to for adults you know your job or whatever family job stuff like that yeah hmm. i nailed it i nailed it <laughs> great teacher right <laughs> Cool. All right, I'll let you guys rest, huh? Because I just wanted to give that to him. Um, get your charger tomorrow, and we're gonna do a lot of novice activities this week, because uh, the ordination is a week. Because that's what he wanted was a week. Oh, we lied to your parents, didn't we? I said a day. <laughs> then I'm like, well, how long do you want to be a monk? He's like a week. I was like, oh, great. Because <laughs> technically, that's the rule. A day is when someone dies in the family then you, you, you're just a novice for two hours to make merit. Mm -hmm. And then the old rule was three days minimum. Then Thailand changed it to seven. So in order for me to avoid praise and blame, then seven is appropriate. But he wanted seven. But that is also subject to parental consent. Is he going to wear that to school? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. You just live a chill life. The only time, you know, all the rules that I explained to you... If is you were in Thailand you were in or wherever, is that where the, this... This one, or Southeast, Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia. Thailand, so Myanmar, Laos. If you were living there, it'd be culturally acceptable to wear this to school, probably. Oh yeah. Oh, he's a saint. He's God when he's wearing this over there. Really? Oh yeah. When he get on the bus, everyone has to move. He takes bus priority, free health care, <laughs> police respects him. Um, really? Yeah. People have to bow to him. Mm -hmm. All right. I might do that as well. <laughs> over there. You can shave my head over there. <laughs> then, oh yeah. Oh okay. So this, I was traveling with a novice, and you know how in like. Gas station, they have to like put water bottles, stack the, stack the, you know, just right. restocking, stocking, right, right? Right, right? And, you know, she's busy doing this and not realizing that a novice monk was there. And all she saw was the orange, the tail underneath the feet. And she's like, huh? Ah! She got scared. <laughs> I laughed for so long. I was like, it's okay. It's okay. Because it's a grave offense. Spiritually, it's a grave offense when you... You, you just offended uh, uh, because people don't know if we're actual saints or not. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the definition of a sainthood, which is an arahant or one of the four stages of arahantship, if he just has to let everything go. If he lets greed, anger, and ignorance of the Four Noble Truth grow, he becomes a saint like that. He's ultra mindful of what's happening. So they don't know. That's wise fear. Hmm. It's wise fear. Yeah, they don't want to compound karma. That's another metaphysical stuff. But, right. but yeah, but their belief, their conviction and belief in Buddhism is very high. And, and we are the living teachings of the Buddha. Buddha done passed away. If we don't exist, the teaching can't continue. We also exemplify that teaching by keeping 227 rules. The holy life, holiness of it. Yeah. A lot of people today, a lot of pictures, I forgot to show you guys. A lot of people thought he was wonderful and cute and wanted to take a picture and touch him. Like, you cannot touch a novice. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and um, they respected that. Um, this is Reverend Dr. Kim at Gulfport, but this is a sample. At Gulfport Community. Mm. Harold. 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 Yeah. Man or woman? That looks like a woman. She's a woman. Yeah. But she looks familiar to me. She's a reverend of the Gulfport community. Does she have a career other than this? She looks... I wonder if she... She looks familiar. She was in the military. Military? Oh, yeah, she was in the military. She was um, Air Force, probably. This is my dad. 
you guys haven't met. One day you guys can meet my dad, but he's a professor, triple discipline professor, oh, law, what's his, uh, e- oh, English, French, and law. Law? Yeah. Where's he teach at? Stephen? No, he's retired now, but he received his law degree in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, um, before the war. Mm-hmm. He, and he was a professor in Vietnam before the war, teaching... Or before the, Viet- the Vietnam War, the war? Right, wow. 75, 1970s. Mm-hmm. And now he does immigration law here in Pinellas Park, which the office that we always go there for airsoft stuff. And oh, mm-hmm. that's interesting. Like, So he, you, how old are you? 36. In Vietnam, I'm 37. Oh, it's like Korea. The you're you're one when you turn nine months. No, yeah. You're, you're, or three months. You're one. Yeah, right. It's they, a Chinese it's like calendar. The time of conception. That's how they do it. Yeah. He no go to jail. We had a police officer there for the event because it was so big. Huh. Yeah. Really? Is that many people? Oh yeah. Wow. Mhm. Big guy. What did he ask you? Uh, he asked like, how does it affect like school? Yeah, Ethan is clueless. He was getting, he took he was so getting interrogated by the cops. Was, um, Ethan is just clueless. Was, and then Eric went over there to save him. <laughs> no, he didn't even say anything. He was standing there smiling. And I was like, I want to see what you're going to say. He was, like, he was like asking him. So he was like, so how do you not use like social media or your phone? He took it literally. School? And Ethan's like, well, I just got ordinated yesterday. So I haven't <laughs> had to go to school yet. <laughs> <laughs> Was that not a We have too much fun when we go. You know, you get stuff like this, you know? And yeah, so um, it was a lot of fun. Lots and lots of fun. So how big is the Buddhist community in this area? Like how many people? Big, 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 big. Not just Vietnamese. You have Laos. You have Cambodians. You have Thai. Okay, Viet, Laos, Cambodian, Thai, foreign. You have Japanese. You have Zen. You have Mahayana, Theravada. Have three schools that serve all these people here in the Tampa Bay area. Oh, yeah, here, yeah, a- a anywhere. Of, there's a lot of Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnam. he's been with me. Eric's been with me for almost four, four years. I had a lot of Mian friends in, in uh, Alaska. When four I was years. Before. And everywhere we go, people, you know, hi, how are you? You know, like this, the masses of the crowd that comes up and pays the respect in public. Mm. Yeah, so he gets to learn a lot about the culture of Buddhism. Cool. Yeah. Okay, go change, go change, so I can have my robes back. <clears throat> well, well, actually, he can, oh no, I gotta wash them. Oh, well, actually, he can, he can hold it, and then he can wash it. <laughs>